that's blue you see the grass below that goes back to what i was talking about even in the, the, the beauty industry which is a billion dollar industry when it relates to us as black women um for years they never like i said for myself and even for other black women of color there they always made makeup for us they were only just a few shades mm -hmm. You know, so even for the light-skinned black women in the, the white world of beauty, they only had three or four shades of light skin and one shade of dark skin. That was it. But don't you, you see that it's now changing? You know? Don't you see that uh -huh. it's now changing? Like, they're, yeah, they're the now fancy. changing yeah. it. Um, <laughs> but even now, with for me, I gotta go run through a whole lot of makeup just to find one to match me, but at least I can try now. There was a time that Maybelline, who all L'Oreal, all the, they didn't think of of, of us. Mm -hmm. You know, we they had two or three shades for the black woman. You mm -hmm. picked the rule them three, mm -hmm. and then they had fifteen shades for the white woman. Mm -hmm. Now I don't understand why, because to me the white woman had one color. <laughs> Yeah, and I, okay. you know, and for me with Mac, the powder I picked, it was always dark. I'm like, so if my I match dark, what what is somebody dark? What do they use? If I got right. dark, because right. dark was my if yours was the dark. Yeah, exactly. Like, what is this? I think was it who was it was it uh, Maybelline or when Queen Latifah had her line that she went a little Maybelline? dark. Which Maybelline. is a Maybelline line. I don't wear right. makeup. I wear a lip gloss. That's about as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think it's only maybe three major companies that, like, I think it was is Fenty, right? That did all the shades and yes. they, they showed all yes. the shades. Yeah, um, yeah. but that's yeah. new. That's in the last couple of years. Sure, sure. You know, so but I feel the last like the beauty years industry, of women wearing makeup. I feel like the beauty industry is starting within to, the last yeah. few years of putting a premium on the darker skinned black woman because she's represented on Gucci. She's represented by Fendi. All the high-end um, designers' houses are now putting her at the forefront. They have to. They have to. But because they have to, think about all the little girls who never had the opportunity when we were growing up to say, oh my God, look who's on the cover of this magazine or this. Vogue, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it is changing and it's only changing because of making it. look how long it took for the exactly. change. Exactly. But I guess we shouldn't complain. It finally well, just is changing. The it's just like with everything else. Black women, but when I see the Lupitas and I see the Violas, and I see, yes. you saw Cicely Tyson, God oh rest her God. beautiful soul. Beautiful. You see these women that it took so long for men to just recognize, recognize them. And I, I and we recognize it, but we still need our brothers, our men that we support, we ride for, we out here marching for, we out here ready to take, you know, to understand that don't make, don't make me feel like I have to look a certain type of way to fit your standard of beauty. Right. You you should love women. I know that people have preferences and I get that. But if you decide to be with me, this is me. Don't say, oh, but you gotta have long hair because you weren't fair skinned. You well, have to okay. I think that's that's something? another that's another that's a whole nother that's subject. A, what what do we draw the line between this is what I prefer and then colorism? Like why can't someone say this is what I prefer without it being seen as you're being prejudiced to a color. Because my, when I came home to my husband's family, they said you're the first dark skinned woman he's ever brought home. Wow. That was the first thing they said to me. That was the first thing. So for me, he wanted that long hair. He wanted my hair long. And I know that's what he prefers. So can, we, can we talk for a moment about the long hair situation? Mm -hmm. um, you know, me, coming in, me being a hairstylist for so long, after a while, I started realizing that society was also making us feel that we needed that long hair. Straight. You know, our hair is not naturally, you know, our hair comes in different textures and different things. And there's nothing wrong with, we, there's nothing wrong with weaves and, and all, and, and wigs and all that there, but I find, and if y'all disagree with me, let me know. And see, I can say this being being in that hair industry, that some women lost have lost their sense of who they are with the hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The weave. Mm -hmm. That weave mm -hmm. all the way down the back. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, okay, who are you trying to be? Now, I'm saying this, and if y'all want to check me, check me. But you understand I'm in that hair industry. 
And what I was feeling, I've been feeling for so long that we have been losing our sense of identity through this, through the weave and through so many different things. I, and maybe that's another time, another topic, but that's an, because, you know, the white woman, she has the long hair, the well, extreme yeah. long and straight it's, hair. It's and it's because he, it started with, it started with that implantation of the idea of what beauty is. So when well, we were all is, little, exactly. when we were all little and because we didn't see ourselves being broadcast and categorized as beautiful, yeah, when we became a certain age and could do things on our own, we said, hey, let's do this and do this so I can be beautiful. But um, I think all of that comes into play with, with what's been planted in our minds on what is and isn't beautiful. Yeah. So, once again, yeah, they, they gave us and I what, think they we're all beauty, what we beautiful. Be beautiful. And I will say, when I see, and I say this all the time, and I always have to tell the girl, listen, I ain't gay. I'm just you, girl. You fine. When I see the the black woman and and she shaved the head, I, this is I, I, when she's like a short short hair or shaved hair. Those two, those black women are the most beautiful to me because what the hair is not the focus. Right. It's the it's yeah. the, it's the yeah. features. It, and I have seen it. Every time I see, and I'm like, girl, you have the confidence. When you shave your head, I that's wish. a level of confidence. Mm -hmm. I have I wish I had too many women that they have I mean, I cut it short. I, I didn't I shave love it. To have that freedom. I, I cut it short, but I didn't shave it. I thought about it. I keep thinking about it. And when I when we first watched the Black Panther movie, I was like, "Oh, these women in here are fine. They are so gorgeous. I agree. It was just naturally beautiful." Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And that let me know for uh -oh. us, we are so beautiful. So hair don't make us, and I say that all the time. I deal with hair loss, so I always tell people, "Just understand, you're losing your hair. Please understand, your hair does not make you. You are beautiful, whether you have hair or not." Society made us think that it's the hair that makes us, and when we have to have the long weaves and the wigs. But um, we're just, we're beautiful people, all skin tones. Amen. We are beautiful, and that's the thing. They want to be us. And they can't you know, they, they want it from, we're, we're just beautiful people. And I take it back to the Bible. When you read the Bible and, and you learn certain things, they weren't white. And I always ask why that, that the way they depict everyone in the Bible, the picture. Yeah, the picture is what, yeah. Jesus Cotton is hair white. is and not like, white people hair. Cotton is not. Just reading yeah. though, I've, mm -mm. I've, I've just. Bronze skin reading. is not white people yeah. hair. I've gone through no. the Bible from the beginning it's to the end. That woolly hair that they I'm, said Jesus had. Well, yeah. right here, you know about woolly hair. Wool, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I really think. Maybe Einstein, I'm not sure. The days of the Bible. I, I really think that's why we've been hated for so much. Because mm. it goes back to the Bible. If you go deep into your Bible and you listen and you read, a lot of the things that went on, the people weren't white. Like you can't white. live in the Their desert and was dark. pale. I'm sorry. You can't live in the desert and just be pale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, just, it doesn't work that way. It it doesn't. I, I feel as though I've always just looked back at when you look at the hierarchy of how kids are premature and the strongest is a black girl. She has the highest survival rate of a premature child is a little black girl. My and the lowest... Girl. The lowest chance of survival premature is a little white boy. And so from from just in created in the womb, we no have been built to fight. Fighters. We have been built to withstand so much. That is the way God created us. And it and when I was in the hospital with my daughter, there was just like this. She said, What are you having? And she said, What are you having? I said, a little girl. She said, Oh, she's gonna be fine. I was like, How? She said she has the highest rate of survival. She said, because she's a black girl. She's like, and now she said, have you ever heard of the syndrome? The would be white boy. I know, she said, it comes from birth. She said, they are wow. born inferior. She's like, so, that, she said, they know they cannot stand up to who we are. And I just was like, and so I went, to, went on Google. And sure enough, yeah, I was like, that makes sense. Oh, wow. What you're saying oh, makes sense because if yeah. they know that they're inferior, this is why they try to make us feel that we're inferior because we're not. Exactly. So it's that mindset. You're inferior. You're worth nothing. You're this, you're that. And, but, and, and it's crazy because then they say they fear us. Right. And then right. we, are, we are a threat. And, you know, right. I have to have these conversations with my, my son. And now, unfortunately, I have to have the conversations with my brother. Hey, sir, 
You can't be extra loud. You can't be this. You can't be that. Even though you, you're not going to do anything, they're going to make the assumption and they're going to attack. And they're going to call it protecting themselves. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to um, go back to the... Um, you know, the, I am not my hair. Um, you know, just on that note, I, I wanted to bring up a point where um, the controversy, although she's really not black, but the controversy behind Danny Lay, um, I don't even know her. I never even heard of her. Anyway, the controversy this week is her song called Yellow Bone that she was pre pre-releasing and it hit people the wrong way because it was I basically she was saying he liked he liked this yellow bone although she was trying to make the baby's baby mama mad because she darker than her and now she's dating him um a lot of women called it colorism and things like that Mm -hmm. um my thought on it was um if she were a a black light-skinned woman and she had a song called yellow bone my my thing is why what's wrong about that if she wanted to celebrate her color because you know you have other artists celebrating the darker tones in their songs so why is it that because she's a lighter complexion and she wanted to celebrate her skin tone she it was something what's her nationality her. what's her nationality uh, well we come to find out she's dominican and she pre- and she says she's white dominican but then when she tried to apologize for what she did she tried to claim to be you know black as well but a fair um. skin so then she tried okay. to change it up to be like, you know, what's wrong with me? And she said the same argument, which I was like, yeah, what is wrong with her celebrating her complexion? If we t- with brown girl, they can celebrate their complexion in songs. But when right. another complexion does it, it's a problem. It's you how know? you do it. It's your presentation. It's, it's You have to deliver it correctly. Yeah. You have to. The, the delivery has to be. In such a way that you're not so, putting down you're another. You're not putting mm-hmm. down another. Way. I can say something and I'm thinking it's coming out right and then the next person's perception or how they can be perceive it, it could be it's the, it's the play on words can sometimes yeah. be so sometimes I, I don't want to text you let me talk to you because I need to hear your voice yeah. I need to hear the hear what you're the saying tone. I need to the hear tone. your tone because I can say nope and you could take it and oh she's being rude mm-hmm. and honestly yeah. I would just say no nope, you know that's a whole nother topic because I'm so sick of people. I tell people all the time, text message is made for quick responses. If you want me to be polite and all that, I will send you an email. So don't take my text message personally because I say, nope, uh-uh. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, just, I'm just being very direct and to the point. She got an attitude. I just this, yeah. That's just a whole nother subject. It was a touchy subject for me because I'm like, guys, it's a text. Gosh, well, I'm busy. People just have to understand the, the way that they live. It's just me. I'm going to text you. Do not keep texting me. If you have to send me more than three or four messages, call me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't text. I'm like this. You up? Yep. And that goes from dark skin to light skin. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs>